Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today's video is by request. This comes from a subscriber and he was asking, how do I select the right drum sounds for my productions or in my mixing? You know, how do I pick sounds that are going to complement the rest of the music? They're going to hit properly. Those of you who are just kind of getting your feet wet, with uh, discovering different samples and learning what works and what doesn't. I've got some things that are gonna speed up that process for you. So the first thing that you wanna do when you are starting to select and learn how to pick the right drum sounds is to really build your sample collection, your sample library. So I have been collecting, processing, creating sounds for you know over 10 years now. I'm a sound designer as well. So I have a massive pool of sample content that, you know, I've recorded stuff from different drum kits. I've got live kits that I've recorded in studios. I've sampled those. I've, you know, created my own drum kits and then resampled those for certain mixes and made changes. You know, I've processed other producers drums that they've sent me. And so I have this massive collection of sounds that pretty much whatever I need you know, as long as I kind of know what sound I'm after, I, I have it or I can edit it a little bit or mix it, process it to get it to where I need it to be. So that's a big part of, you know, selecting the right samples is having the right samples in your library. So for those of you who have, you know, like one trap drum kit, you know, you're not going to be able to cover all the different bases in terms of your drum and percussion sounds with just that little 808 kit. So start building out your collection. One of the easiest ways, let me just uh, take this out of full screen, is to use a tool like Splice. I found that Splice is really valuable for uh, you know just looking for specific sounds. There's a ton of samples on Splice and it's very reasonable in terms of what they're charging to use the service. Let's just say, you know, if you wanted like a trap snare or whatever, you can just go on Splice and you can preview them in your window. Okay, so let's just say that this was the snare. I like that one. Just buy it real quick. And then once you bought it, you can just drag it directly into your session, into your drum machine, whatever. And there's, again, there's a ton of content on Splice, a lot of high quality stuff. I'll put a link below if you wanna check it out if you're not familiar. But uh, again, this wasn't around when I was coming up in terms of you know, samples and, and all that. It was more just, you get in the studio, you trade samples with producers. But with this, you know, it's all out there. Second tip I have for you for selecting the right drum samples is to dedicate some time to sound design and also processing samples. So I will set aside, you know, maybe a couple of hours a week or whatever, just to dive in and use either my hardware sense or my software sense to create some new drum sounds. I'll record, you know, different things around the house. I might record a drum kit at a studio. You know, I'm, I'm spending time creating new content that can be used in my sample libraries. So for instance, Chromophone, great uh, software plugin instrument that you can actually create your own drums, 808 sounds from scratch. When you have a little bit of background and context in terms of sound design, it's going to help you tremendously in building that sample library, but also having an ear for how those sounds are actually working so that you can edit things, you can tweak things in the context of the mix, and you can use a lot of the processes from sound design and mixing that we talk about to help your drum game tremendously. Third tip I have for you for selecting the right drum sounds is to consider frequency in terms of how all these different elements that you're using are working together. So if you already have an 808 that is, you know, occupying a lot of low end space from 20 to 50, you don't necessarily want to use a kick drum sample that has a lot of 40 hertz energy unless you plan on, you know, side chaining or doing some EQ to kind of carve that space out. You know, at some point you're going to have to create space 
for different elements. So if you're selecting the right drum samples according to frequency, you're gonna have a lot more balance and you're going to have the elements working together across the spectrum versus all, you know, kind of occupying one area. Uh, that goes for snares and hi-hats as well. You know, if, if your instrumentation, if you have a lot of bright, kind of high octave keys and things going, then you're gonna consider that when you're selecting, you know, some of your higher frequency percussion information. It all needs to work together. And it all comes down to, again, the same kind of concepts we talk about with mixing. You want to have a, a blend that makes sense in terms of frequency for your drum sounds. For tip I have for you for selecting the right drum samples is to be aware of your musical tastes. So a lot of you hear mixes, you hear songs and you go, man, I love those drum sounds. I wish my drums sounded like that. And what you're going to have to do is critically listen to those songs and figure out why you like that kick drum. Why do you like that snare? You know, is it because that snare has a certain snap to it? something is being boosted in some of the frequencies in that snare that are making it snap that way or maybe the producer put you know some kind of reverb on it that is drawing you into that and you've got to be able to uh, start to recognize what it is specifically about the drums that you're hearing that you like and once you've identified that you can start applying some of the techniques that you're picking up some of the things you're hearing into your own drums now i'm not saying that you you want to necessarily be trying to achieve the exact drum sound of everybody else out here you of course can you know make it your own building upon that you know with a song you've got drums that have a certain vibe to them the same as you select you know instruments that have a certain feel to them you know people send me beats where the instrumentation sounds great they picked all the right instruments the the melodies and things sound good but the drum samples the vibe just doesn't fit the the song like that maybe the kick's just really thin and weak sounding or the snare is out of tune or it's just not it doesn't have the right tonality to kind of fit the beat so right there you know you kill the vibe of the whole track because you didn't match the feeling of the drums so just because the drums don't necessarily have as much of like a melodic aspect to them the vibe is still in these samples and the way that you're selecting them the way you're putting them all together a fifth tip i have for you for selecting the right drum samples is to consider layering your drums so a lot of you you know you're just throwing one 808 kick you know maybe a snare maybe one hat and it doesn't have the impact, it doesn't have the thickness that you're after. There's nothing wrong with stacking sounds. This snare is three different samples stacked on top of each other. Now, once you start layering, you're gonna get more comfortable with kind of what sounds go together and what will give you more of an impact for certain samples or like we were talking about earlier how can you understand the frequencies of these different sounds and if something's missing frequency wise from one sample you can accentuate it with a sample that has that frequency that you're looking for stack them together boom you've got what you need so again to get some of these bigger drum sounds you're not just going to have you know one single sample a lot of the the samples in in my uh, kits you know they're multiple that's like a there's a live kick in there you know there might be an 808 that i layered underneath something's processed with some saturation and distortion and they're all brought together all right y'all so those are my tips for selecting the right drum samples i hope these help you get on the right track if you learn anything in the video please like subscribe and consider sharing we'll talk to you soon